Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition for Bible Track Echoes. This is the final day of the work week for so many of us. I hope that your heart and mind is already preparing to be in God's house this coming Lord's Day for corporate worship with fellow saints. I hope you have a great church, a local church with a godly pastor who can stand and boldly declare the word of God with passion and love in his heart and with a, well, with a tear in his, in his eye for lost souls. If you've got that kind of pastor, that kind of local church, you are greatly blessed of God. Well, right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Leviticus. Please, you got to come with me today. This is just too good. Leviticus, 14 and get something on which you can write. Now, many of you know that I love the Old Testament. I love it in major part because of the pictures here that I find of Christ and the salvation he offers us. And here in Leviticus 14 is one of the greatest pictures of all of the work of salvation. I have preached Leviticus 14 to 8 through 11-year-olds a number of times over the years, and they remember the story. I Go ahead, invite me to your church. Let me preach this passage. It's a tremendous gospel message. Do you remember over in Luke 17 where the 10 lepers came to Jesus to be healed and only one of the 10 returned to say thank you? Well, when Jesus healed the 10, Jesus told them to go show themselves to the priests. And what would have happened when they got there is the story and the ritual we find here in Leviticus 14. Now, if you've ever wanted a clear picture, a mental picture of what it means to be declared free after being declared dead in sin, this is your day. Today, get a pen and paper, jot down three key words today, and at the end of our broadcast, you'll get to choose between two options. You're in one of them today. Please, I hope you're in the correct one. Get your Bible, Leviticus chapter 14. I have a gospel tract here in my hand. Now, Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated, as my announcer has said. We have been for 80 years, been publishing gospel tracts in different languages and giving them away. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And the tract in my hand right now is, it is one of my favorite ones. It's entitled, The Best I Can. The Best I Can. It's one of my favorites because it gives a clear illustration of somebody who was futilely trying to accomplish an insurmountable task. They're offered, they're offered a way to accomplish the task free of charge, and they refuse it. So many people have been offered the gift of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, and they say, no, I am going to try to work my way to heaven. Here is a great gospel tract. Not only is it clear in its picture, but it's also very short, very easy to read. I give this one to kids. I give this one to adults. It really is one of my favorite ones, the best I can. At the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can communicate with us, giving us your name and your mailing address. Do that, and we'll send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one, the best I can. Now, some of you have been listening for a long time and you've been, well, you've been kicking that whole thought around about contacting us. Make today the day that you do that. This is be the last day that I'm going to mention this. We are getting ready to publish 1.3 million gospel tracts printed inside the country of Pakistan in the language of Urdu. 
But that cost to do that is $22,000. I've got to get it done. The workers are there ready to pass out the tracks. And every time we print tracks in this volume, thousands of people come to Christ. Thousands. I'm not exaggerating. Would you consider helping us? Contact us right away and help us print those tracts, put them in the hands of good gospel workers, and let's see eternity glow with the fact that people who are once dead in trespasses and sins are now alive through the salvation offered in Jesus Christ. Well, if your Bible's open, to the book of Leviticus chapter 14, verse 1 and following says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and And the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen or clay vessel over running or clean water. As for the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into an open field and he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and wash himself in water that he may be clean. And afterward, he shall come into the camp and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. We need to stop right there. There is no place in scripture where we actually see this ceremony, this ritual taking place. It's described here, but we have no actual event of it, record of an event of it uh, in the scriptures. What we see here is a person who once had leprosy being declared clean uh, by the priest. Now, leprosy in that time and era was a virtual death sentence. Leprosy is used in Scripture as a fitting picture of the sin in the life of an unsaved person person. Note, please, that leprosy made you unfit to worship God. Well, here, sin is the reason lost people are unfit to worship God and unfit to go to heaven. Not only that, leprosy is a disease usually starting small on the flesh and getting progressively worse. Well, sin habits are just that way in people. They start small and get progressively worse. Worse, And then third, the leprosy ended up in a horrible death, and typically there was no cure, especially in the Old Testament days. Well, friend, sin in the life of a person, any person, ends up in death, and an awful death to be sure. The wages of sin is death. Oh, the actual way that a sinner dies, his physical body dies, may be easy and quiet, but the fires and eternal punishment in the lake of fire are not quiet. They're not easy. They're awful. There is good news in all of the stuff here based upon Leviticus chapter 14. And the good news is that evidently some did get healed of leprosy. If that were not the case, if that were not possible, then this ritual would not have been given by God through Moses. Now, dear listener, please hear me. God does love you, but being loved by God does not remove the sin stain from your soul. The work of being declared clean in the eyes of God is pictured here in Leviticus chapter 14. Now, write down, please, write down three key, key, key words here. Are you ready? Word number one, substitution. Substitution. One bird gets to live and go free in this ceremony, but only because another bird died. Substitution. One bird gets to go free, but only because another bird died. Now, that word substitution is a critical concept when it comes to being saved as we come to the New Testament. Jesus was born into this world with a pointed purpose. That purpose was to give his life as a ransom for many, to pay sin's price 
for people. He came to give his life. He bore your sins in his body on the cross. He, Jesus, is God's substitute for sinners. Why? Because God so loved the world, but his love can't save us from our sin stain. The verse goes on to say, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. We do not perish because of the son. It's the love of God sent Christ. The love of Christ took him to Calvary, and he offers you salvation, but only because he is your substitute. Key word number two is the word identification. One bird got to live only after being identified with the blood of the bird who died. In the ceremony, a bird is killed and his blood is spilt into the bowl of clean water. Then the living bird was dipped into that bloody water. Only after being identified with the blood could the second bird be set free. Oh, beloved, the Bible is clear on this. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. You cannot be declared forgiven until you personally accept the fact that your sin was so severe that it required an actual death. Jesus is the only one who was sinless himself. He was then able to come and be our substitute, but you must personally receive Jesus and his bloody death as your sin payment. Word number one, substitution. Word number two, identification. Word number three is the word demonstration. In verse seven here, the living bird was set free into an open field and his bloody body distinguished him from all the other birds. In verse eight of Leviticus 14, the once leprous person has been declared clean. He's allowed to go home, but for seven days, that person was to live outside of his house, outside of his tent. The whole community would walk by and see this person. The clean person would be clearly a demonstration that they, there can be life after a death sentence of leprosy. Oh, now for every one of us, we come to those two options. For you and I to come and read this and say, my, 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 isn't that a nice story? It's not enough. We must say, how do I fit into this? How do I see myself in this story? And friend, you and I have only two options. Either we are a sinner with a death sentence on our life who needs a substitute or We are a forgiving uh, forgiven and living child of God who is to demonstrate before the world that we are now clean, clean in the eyes of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Beloved, that's why Christ died on the cross. He didn't cry, die on the cross to be just a, a, a moral idea of we ought to be ready to give our lives for other people. No, no, no. Christ died in our place that we through him might be saved. Have you received Christ as your Savior? He is the only substitute available. You cannot get rid of the sin stain off your soul by the good works you do, your religiosity, or even becoming a preacher. You need a bloody sacrifice. And there's only one. His name is Jesus. He died and rose again that you through him can be saved. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.